In the last two modules, we introduced systems, the system life cycle, and systems engineering, looking in particular at the relevance and benefits of system engineering. Before we go on to look at the various activities involved in forthcoming modules, in this module we'll look at needs and requirements. We'll also consider how we go about developing the set of requirements, and we call that process requirements engineering. When describing the system, we need to make the distinction between needs and requirements. Needs are generally capabilities stated in the language of business management or stakeholders at the business operations levels. Requirements are formal statements that are structured and can be validated. There may be more than one requirement that can be defined for any need. Requirements are generated from needs through a process of requirements analysis, which is also called business analysis or mission analysis at the higher levels. Needs and requirements exist at a number of levels. First, there's an enterprise view, in which the enterprise leadership sets the enterprise strategies and concepts of operations. Then there's a business management view, in which business management derive business needs and constraints, as well as formalise their requirements. There's a business operations view, in which stakeholders define their needs and requirements, and then a systems view, in which the system is defined in logical and physical terms. Subsequently, of course, there are views at the lower level of the subsystem and other system elements, but we're going to focus on the upper levels. As illustrated here, the enterprise, business management and business operation views are in the problem domain. The system and subsystem and lower views are in the solution domain. As we discussed in earlier modules, the problem domain is generally considered to be the responsibility of those who have the ownership of the problem that's to be solved. So the descriptions of the system are mostly in the language of the customer's business management and business operations, focusing on what the system needs to be able to do, how well it should be done, and why. And we saw that we called these descriptions the logical or functional descriptions. Now on the other hand, the solution domain is often considered to be the responsibility of those implementing the system. So the descriptions of the system in that domain are mostly in engineering and in physical terms focusing on how the problem is to be solved, that is, how it will look once it's been implemented. And so these latter descriptions we called physical descriptions. At the highest level, the enterprise has a number of strategies that will guide the future of the enterprise. From our perspective, our system has its genesis in what's called the concept of operations, or the CONOPS, which communicates the leadership's intentions with regard to the operation of the organisation in terms of how it's going to use existing systems and the systems to be developed, one of which will be ours. The business needs and requirements, the BNR definition process, begins with the organisation's vision, goals and objectives communicated by the CONOPS. Business management then uses this guidance to define business needs. And largely those business needs are captured in a number of documents called the Preliminary Lifecycle Concept Documents, or the PLCD. And they capture early versions of the acquisition concept, the operational concept, called the OpsCon, the deployment concept, the support concept, and the retirement concept. Let's look at each of those life cycle concepts in a little more detail. First, not so much in the order I showed you before, but first in terms of its priority, is the OpsCon, the operations concept, because the business can then describe what it is it wants the system to do, how well, and why. And that's from the perspective of the user. Then the business talks about how it proposes to acquire it. So the acquisition concept describes the way in which the acquisition will proceed, including stakeholder engagement, requirements definition, solicitation, contracting issues, design, production, verification, and so on. The deployment concept describes the way in which the system is going to be validated. So how will we know that it meets the user's needs? How are we going to deliver it? How will we introduce it into service? And so on. The support concept then focuses on the desired support infrastructure, manpower considerations, how the system is going to be supported after it's deployed and so on. So it addresses support, engineering support, maintenance support, supply support and training support. And finally, the retirement concept describes how the system is going to be removed from operation and retired, including, of course, issues associated with the disposal of any hazardous materials and so on. Now at this very early stage, the business management has prepared draft or preliminary documents and they're going to be fleshed out by stakeholders at the business operations level. First, however, the business needs that are contained in these preliminary documents are elaborated and formalised into business requirements and they are documented then in the business requirement specification, the BRS, 
which is sometimes called the Business Requirement Document, or the BRD. The process by which business needs are transformed from needs into business requirements is called mission analysis or business analysis. Once business management are satisfied that their needs and requirements are reasonably complete, they pass them on to the business operations level. Here, the stakeholder needs and requirements, the SNR definition process, uses the CONOPS and other PLCD as guidance. Requirements engineers lead stakeholders from the business operations level through a structured process to elicit stakeholder needs, and that's normally in the form of refined versions of the OPSCON and the other lifecycle concept documents. Stakeholder needs are then once again transformed formally into a set of requirements called the Stakeholder Requirements, and they're documented in the Stakeholder Requirements Specification, the STRS. And that transformation is the formal process of requirements analysis. At the system level, in the System Requirements Definition process, the requirements in the STRS are then transformed by requirements engineers into system requirements, which are then documented in the System Requirements Specification, the SYRS. It has other names as well. It's often referred to as the Solution Requirement Specification document, or most commonly, probably, simply the System Specification, or the System Spec. Note that the figure illustrates that a number of SYRS may be derived from the STRS, and that harks back to our description before that there may be a number of systems developed as part of a greater capability system. Also note that some organisations may prepare individual lifecycle documents for each of a number of systems that are developed to meet the business needs. The process then continues from the system down to the system elements. As we observed earlier, the requirements are now physical requirements as they relate to the elements of the system rather than to the system itself. 